Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. Are you familiar with the word mutiny sir? Wait you're not alone. Fun and good times with sales taxes. The waitress ain't the tech department. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Are you familiar with the word mutiny sir? Years ago I become manager of tech support for a small startup with a half dozen techs. I'd worked in support for a dozen years by then and I always told them that my job was to advocate for both them and the company equally and that by doing both we'd get the best results. My boss was the owner of the company. He got excited about things quickly but had the retention of a fruit fly. When he came up with ideas stopping him was difficult and more than once it became detrimental to the success of the company. At one point in time he managed to wander into a Best Buy when the Microsoft Surfaces had first been released. He was smitten with them and after a few days decided that everyone in the office should be using them. So began the rollout meeting where I first heard his intention of replacing my tech's desktops with three monitors and laptops with a single Surface Pro. I politely tried to steer him away from this idea for at least tech support by suggesting maybe a pilot program or a usability study or anything really would be a better idea. Undeterred he kept things moving along talking about licensing and timelines for adoption. Whenever I was asked anything my hesitation was noticeable and over and soon became an issue. What's your problem? Everyone else is on board with this, why aren't you? I explained calmly that my techs required a significant amount of screen real estate to do things like work in SQL, do remote connections, interface with upper support tiers. So if I take away their computers and make them use Surface Pros what are they going to do? At this point in time it would have been more comical if his past whims hadn't been detrimental to us and the company. But it wasn't. He was dead serious. Are you familiar with the term mutiny sir? English wasn't his first language, but I think he finally understood what the results would be if he went through with this. I made a calm statement about what happens when you take away the tools techs needed to get their jobs done. I was asked to leave the meeting, and I returned to my cubicle. Within a few days the Surface Pros started to show up around the office. Everyone was enamored with the new shiny objects they'd been issued while my techs never for a second considered that those would have been their fate had it not been for my advocacy. Over time the Surface Pros eventually all died in one way or another, broken screens, overheating, etc. If anyone knows anything about these they were essentially unreparable. The head of sales told his staff to keep important files on a USB stick in case theirs died, and when they needed a replacement they could just get what they wanted at best by as long as it wasn't another Surface Pro. Wait you're not alone. Whilst working on the help desk in my current company, I came across a lazy manager who lied to me, you don't lie to me. One quiet night shift me and my colleague, TP, were waiting for calls, because it was such a quiet night we could hear each clearly as we sat together this is how it started. Lazy manager, help my keyboard isn't working. TP, have you tried a different USB port? LM, yes. TP, try to reboot? Confirmed by checking log. LM, yes. TP, is there a spare keyboard knocking about? Is there another keyboard around? LM, no. TP, are you able to nip out and purchase a USB 2.0 keyboard? It has to say USB 2.0 on the box, shop staff can take cash out the draw for supplies etc. LM, no, I'm single manning tonight, working on his own, and there isn't a anywhere I can but one right now. TP, we'll send one an engineer to replace it first thing, just log on to the other till for the night. LM, thank you. After he hung up I asked TP for the address of the shop, after a quick Google Earth search I noticed right next door is a computer repair shop with keyboards in the window. After checking it's still open I call the shop back and tell the manager, if he locks up he can get a replacement next door for his staff for the morning rush, you see by the time the engineer arrived it'd be nearer 1200. This is how my call went. Me, is this shop X? It's me from help desk. Oh hi, yes this shop X. What's up? Me, I know you're single manning, but if you want a replacement keyboard next door is open until 2200. I'm not single manning this female employee says back to me. 
Me, oh, the manager said he was alone. Fe, I heard. He's hiding upstairs in the office like he always does when we are busy, you can call him on X. Me, are you busy tonight? Fe, very, we need two untils tonight. I have to go. Click goes the phone. Shocked by the laziness of the store manager I decide to not call the manager, but call his boss knowing it's Friday night, and the last thing he wants a call on Friday night, and how many times I be done over by lazy managers. I fill in the area manager who is livid that she's been left alone, the manager would not lift a finger to help, and that I called him out if hours on Friday, I forgot, he said leave it with me. After a couple of hours I get a call from F.E. again she's laughing when I pick up. Me, Company X help desk me speaking how can I help? F.E. is me there? Clearly didn't hear me through the laughter. Me, me speaking. F.E., I owe you big time, the area manager just came down unannounced and found the manager asleep in his chair. He was told to go home, after purchasing that keyboard and I've been put in charge for the weekend. Me, no worries, I hate lazy lying managers. You still busy? F.E., yeah but we've got cover for till 2 now. A few week later Shop X calls again on an unrelated matter and it turns female employee is now female manger and the old manager was fired for multiple things, the sleeping on shift was the last straw. Fun and good times with sales taxes. I work for a dollar slowbook subcontractor and unfortunately I started right in tax season, so sadly I've been too busy keeping up with my work to write much, with tax season not just looming overhead, but breathing down our necks. At the time of writing, we are in mandatory half-lunch mode and I'm on my half-lunch, but I'm not hungry so I'm writing here instead. As one would expect though, I have a few tales. This one is about an ultimately nice customer, so I'm not going to badmouth them at all, but what they did is certainly a story worth telling. I even tell my other customers this story, since it's just so memorable. At Dollar Slowbooks, we have a reports function, and on this customer's reports, they were showing sales tax twice, on different amounts, so naturally they called. At this time I was fresh out of training, so I messaged AT2 immediately, and we eventually dug up what was happening. This customer claimed he was moving from the old tax system to the new tax system, and it was screwing things up because tax was being collected twice. Knowing this isn't normal, I first decided to actually look at his tax custom rates. The taxes displaying twice didn't correspond to the ones with custom rates, so that was out. Next I looked at an invoice, and this is where things got weird, now at the time I didn't notice anything wrong, because I wasn't actually trained on how our sales tax system works since we're typically expected to get the tax team involved via RT2. But what I did notice was that he had a line item for his sales taxes, and also that our automated system took sales tax on his subtotal, including his manually input sales tax. This will come back into play later, but I dismissed this as a relic of the old system. Now, in his defense, we did migrate from a hybrid manual slash automatic rate system to full automatic with user editable custom rates. I wasn't educated on either tax system, so I was just going by what my T2 suggested. So I decided to look at his products to see if we could disable sales tax on an item for testing purposes. And there I saw it. Hundreds, and I mean hundreds, over 200 manually input sales taxes as products. Turns out he never actually used our tax systems until now, and thought he was supposed to manually enter every tax as a line item. And when he set up the new tax system after being notified the old one was being discontinued, he thought it would remove his line items. My T2 responded in slack with the pick of the captain from Star Trek, never watched it, been meaning to, face palming. So, I carried on, not letting the absurdity of what I just saw get to me, and told him to just stop adding line items for taxes, and let us handle it unless he needs to fix rates, in which case he can make a custom rate in the new system, and to mark his old items as either tax exempt, or remove the line items, and that sadly we can't do this automatically. After the call, I felt like taking a cold shower. The waitress ain't the tech department. Hello everyone, first time posting. A bit of a longer one. This was happened back in 2017 whilst working a summer job. Granted restaurant waitress doesn't exactly scram tech support. You'd be surprised how difficult it is for some people to grasp the basic concept of a cash register. And soon enough one gets used to the fact that some people think that rebilling somehow erases the mucked up bill. 
which still somehow ended up being my fault despite the fact I was told to just stand back so as not to screw up. But nothing had prepaid me for what I was on for next. The first day on the now job I found out that the owner hadn't even gotten a cash register. Aka no tax, big fines. And being the computer girl is evidenced by my ownership of a laptop and finishing high school for s graphic designer. The responsibility of setting up the cash register, once it came, fell to me, alongside working on and mending any issues with the card terminals. Sometimes I'd get asked to literally burn the boss a CD, yes an actual CD with music for his car in 2017, and or putting set music from that CD to the boss iPhone 7. Other times it was making the menus and or correcting the same. But EY, at least I got to literally play Skyrim on the job. All the usual, till the Italian bike club arrived. Note, I don't live on an English-speaking country. If you want to work the season you have to know English, German and Italian at least, this will be important later. Fast forward to the bike club arriving, standard warning, thousand plus euro bill for the bunch. After a while the club's GUID decides that he'll pay with his credit card. And just then the card machine runs out of paper. I see the card's been approved on the screen and he shows me a text from his bank that it did go through. Fast forward to the next morning when last night's total dose not include set bill. My boss go as ballistic on me. And decided to sort the matter once they come back, as they checked into the hotel attached to the restaurant. Soon enough, the day finally comes. Remember what's said about languages? Well he only spoke German and claimed to speak Italian form that list. No English. Despite that he insisted that the GUID talks to me in Italian, and that I translate it back. I try the machine as usual, rejected. He pushes me aside calling me an idiot, tries it himself with the same resolute. Again, again and again. Now by this point I'm getting tired. And the conversation had turned to bank calling, and he said she said. Until at one point I had enough, and just told the GUID il capo parla italiano the boss speaks Italian. I could see the GUID crack the whitest grin I've ever seen. Meanwhile the boss sitting at the reception desk shot a I'm gonna kill you look at as the entire motor club, like 12 or so people, opened up on him. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.